Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, it's January. That means it's time for Hop Slam. Hop Slam is a 10% double IPA from Bell's Brewery in Comstock, Michigan. This is now the fourth year I'll be officially reviewing Hop Slam, and you might notice something maybe a little bit different about it. This time, it's back to throwback bottles, and we can thank an aluminum can shortage for that. Although I wasn't really going to be surprised if we would have seen some other breweries' cans underneath if they decided to go with cans. Be a little bit crazy, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. So anyways, we're going to take a look at the familiar label. We'll get it into a glass, but I'd first like to thank my executive producers, Ryan Berry, Eric Letowski, Zach, Brian Kramer, and Cam Freeman for helping bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, or maybe just buy me a beer, take a look at my Patreon at patreon.com slash draft underscore therapy, where you can get early access to these videos, exclusive patron-only live streams, and a few other special perks. So we're going to take a look at the label here. You're probably familiar with it. It is a green label. Uh, it says Bell's Comstock Michigan across the top on the neck. And then it has Hop Slam Ale, the familiar picture of a guy being just crushed under three hop cones. And across the bottom, it says Double India Pale Ale Brewed with Honey, brewed and bottled by Bell's Brewery Incorporated in Comstock, Michigan. And then on the back, it says an exceptionally aromatic blend of hops combined in this balanced interpretation of the double IPA style, best enjoyed as fresh as possible. This has a shelf life of three months. It's alcohol 10% by volume. This was packaged on December 29th, 2020. Today, I'm reviewing this. It also has the, the website bellsbeer.com. Today is Sunday, January 10th. So I just picked this up a few days ago. It's only been on shelves, I think, since the 6th. So it's been a few days. Different places across Michigan, you, you should have been able to find it. So we're going to use the IPA glass here, and we're going to go ahead and crack this. Oh, and looking at the top, the bottle cap is the same guy being crushed under the hop cones. This is what's on the label. It's been what's on the can, but we're going to crack it open and get a sniff out of the bottle here and set that to the side. And let's put a nose on it. Has a bit of a sweet aroma to it. It doesn't really, the smell itself doesn't really, you know, belie all the hops that are in there. It doesn't really have a, anything that really jumps out as being super like bitter or any kind of pungent aroma. But you get a kind of a nice, sweet aroma, a little bit of that honey aroma, maybe a little bit of a maltiness in there. Let's go ahead and pour this. Coming out really yellow, golden out of the bottle. I almost said the can, but this is a bottle. And emptying it into the glass here. We're getting about, eh, about three fingers worth of head. This is an IPA glass. It creates a big head on these kind of beers. Has a really, uh, just an off-white, an off-white head. Big bubbles across the top, as you can see from the overhead. Really nice condensed bubbles on the top. I mean, if without really looking super close at this, it's hard to even tell that this isn't just like a solid form on top of here. Nice cross section, a lot of carbonation rising up from the bottom. If we hold it up to the light, that is just really, you know, golden yellow, what you would expect. A really nice, it's not super clear, but it is very, you know, there's not a lot of particulate floating in there. It's maybe, I think the most of it's probably just the cold of the glass, but it's, it's fairly clear. It's, it's got a little bit of a haziness to it, but that's about it across the bottom. It's a lot clearer, but still great carbonation rising up from the bottom. Let's put a better nose on the glass. Out of the glass is a little bit different than out of the bottle. It gets it has a little bit more of a malty aroma. It has a little bit of more of a, of a citrus kind of um, stinging kind of aroma. Nothing, you know, nothing offensive. Has still has that sweetness to it, though. I'm ready to dive right in. It's been about a year since I've had one of these, so let's try it out. Cheers. Ah, uh, yes. Just as I remember it. Nice, crisp mouthfeel. Not thick, not cloying. Doesn't, you know, doesn't coat your mouth and doesn't really um, have any of that business going on. It's, but it's a nice, crisp, almost a little bit, almost a light mouthfeel. But the thing that I'm really picking up on, just on that first taste, and the first taste is always the biggest kind of shock to your system, it has a big uh, citrus bitter quality to it. And I think from years past, I find that the, it seems like this one's a lot more bitter than I remember it being. But let's try another drink and see if it kind of mellows out my palate here.
there's a bit of a sweetness on the beginning, on the upfront, and that really just gives way. There's a bit of a maltiness in there as well, but it is very strong hoppiness this year. Um, in years past, it's been a little bit more of a sweet flavor, a little bit more of a honey flavor. I, I feel like the honey kind of in some years has out um, outperformed or just kind of overshined all the hoppiness, the bitterness. You know, this was for years and years and years was one of the most bitter beers to come out of Bell's. And I feel like these days it's it doesn't really measure up. It, it was I feel like it was like an answer to West Coast styles. And this and this year, it feels like it's a little bit more closer to those West Coast IPA kind of roots or maybe what, you know, I would think of as a West Coast IPA, really strong citrus, really strong citrus bitterness uh, and 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 really um, a little bit of a piney. But I feel like the citrus bitterness is so um, it's so just like orange peel zesty bitterness. It's not uh, and a little bit of a piney bitterness in there as well. It's not um, it's not sweet like years past. At least my, that's my opinion. That big flavor, I feel like um, I'm getting a little bit, I feel like the booziness of this is kind of, it's not really overwhelmingly boozy either, but I feel like it's it's kind of, it's it's pushing that bitterness almost more than normal. Uh, you know, I feel like that, that alcohol kind of booziness really, there's no burn, there's no kind of bite, or there's no kind of burn or boozy kind of feeling, but I feel like the booziness, the 10% is kind of pushing up the bitterness of the beer. And again, like years past, it's hard not to compare this to years past because, you know, every year people say like, oh, this year's a little bit more honey. This year's a little bit more piney bitterness. This year's a little bit more citrus bitterness. I feel like this year is really more of that, well, again, that West Coast style IPA that we've all, that I've always equated Hop Slam to being. This is like really the closest in years past. I've been really surprised. Like it, it hasn't been as bitter as it had been in years past. I feel like this is like a return to bitterness. And it's the recipe doesn't change, but the ingredients, the ingredients don't really change either. But the 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 you know the crop of hops that you get, the hops are going to be the same in the recipe, but the the hop you know harvest that they get is going to be a little bit different every year. And and the ingredients obviously aren't they don't store it in a time capsule and they open it every year and they take these you know ingredients that are that are just frozen in time. So every year it has a little bit of a different flavor and a little bit of a different taste. Again, I feel like this year's is a little bit closer to a West Coast style IPA. And this is like Hop Slam of old, at least in my opinion. Maybe it's that I haven't had very many West Coast IPAs lately, maybe more of those New England styles. So this is really kind of pushing my opinion. But this tastes to me, a lot of that citrus bitterness, a lot of that piney bitterness, a lot of that resinous quality to it, and not so much of the honey. The honey feels like it's being downplayed a little bit more this year. And again, I think it's because just those hops are so much, have such a stronger flavor. Maybe as it warms a little bit, as it's been sitting out here and it breathes a little bit, a little bit more of that honey flavor comes through, a little bit more of that sweetness, that malty characteristic come through. But I feel, again, like it is, this is just kind of a return to form to that West Coast style hop slam that I remember from all those years past. So, you know, for me, I would say if you're a West Coast IPA fan and you've kind of stayed away from hop slam because it just got too sweet for you or too malty or, you know, became like that malt bomb to you or like a you know, sat around, it became like a barley wine. I feel like this is a return to form. If you're looking for something that's really, uh, has that real strong West Coast style IPA bitterness, like I've probably said, West Coast style IPA, we could probably throw a counter up and see that I've said it like 15 times so far. But if that's what you're looking for, I feel like that's what you're going to get this year. It is a little bit of a different change of pace. If you're looking for that sweeter hop slam, I don't think you're going to find it here. As it warms up, it breathes a little bit more and gets that flavor, but I feel like this one's gonna be a bitter one all the way through. All right, friends, that has been Bell's Hop Slam for 2021. Have you had this year's Hop Slam yet? What do you think of it? Do you think it's bitter like I think or more sweet? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might wanna subscribe and click that bell because I'm here talking about beer twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you, and you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and getting those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries, and most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.